Peace everybody, Carol here, and I'm here on Asperger's versus Neurotypicals to talk about um, yesterday's thought that I had. Um, in some of my earlier videos, I've talked about the importance of mm, attaining uh, certain brainwave states, like alpha for uh, calm centeredness. So um, I, I had um, some more thoughts about that. This is more of a holistic approach to brainwave training. So I would like to share this with you. To start off with, let's start with the lowest frequencies and go all the way up to the highest frequencies and see what they're called. So when we're in the deepest deep sleep, we want our brain uh, neurons to fire coherently. And by that I mean if one is firing every second, so that would be like the lowest I think is approximately one hertz or one firing of the neuron per second in your brain. And so you want almost all your brain cells to be firing exactly in synchronicity. So they're all firing, all firing, all firing. And um, there, it may be that you know you just want certain regions to fire that way, but for now let's just assume that wherever the electrodes are placed, um, you want it to pick up um, delta. So you want one hertz to maybe uh, four hertz for when you're sleeping in deep sleep, delta sleep. Um, <clears throat> that's very, very slow. And um, then the next level, okay, the delta, one to four. And then theta is defined, um, and you know, these definitions vary across the field, but typically theta is five to 10 hertz theta maybe 5 to 9. And then alpha is the 10 to 14 range. So let's go back to theta. So theta is the hypnagogic state when you're sort of just falling asleep. And then you later you go to the delta state with the 1 hertz or the 2 hertz. But maybe 4 hertz for the average Joe Schmo. <laughs> but anyway, so theta, maybe 5 to 10. And that's sort of a slower. And so when you're laying down to sleep and your eyes get closed, and it's very dark, and you you start to like you almost catch yourself dreaming, but you might jump out of jump out of a dream and open your eyes and then kind of drift back in, like say if you're napping by the TV, that would be theta. And usually in theta you can start to dream. And so for me, when I close my eyes and go into that state, I can usually start to see images in my behind my eye. Now I couldn't do this before my 30s because I just, I didn't even know it was possible. I didn't know what it was. I'm sure it was there, but I just didn't really pay attention to it. Then I started noticing that I would see shapes behind my closed eyes when I was in this theta hypnagogic state. And they were so clear. They looked, it looked, I, closing my eyes, it just looked like I was looking at a screen and I was completely awake. So I trained myself to do this more and more. Now I'm getting off on a tangent because I want to go ahead and define the other wavelengths. So we've got delta, we've got theta, and then alpha at 10 to 14 hertz. And let me say something. Um, alpha is where you are relaxed and receptive and awake and aware, but not stressed, not in a rush, but just pleasantly sitting there, maybe um, appreciating the trees outside your window, you pause for a moment to think, and again, there's no rush. There's no rush. That's the key point for me to explain what alpha is. You're very calm, and this is the state we want to be in most of the time during our daytime is alpha, because when you're in alpha, your brain gets the most nutrients. Being in alpha for the brain is equivalent to, let's say, your body being the most healthy and getting the most nutrients because you you know you don't want your <clears throat> microcapillaries to be clogged or constricted you want them to be open so that you can get nutrients to the cells and then remove toxins from the cells so it's like the city's highways being no traffic and everything's going smoothly that's alpha then beta you have different kinds of beta but beta is typically when you feel rushed you're working hard you have your will engaged. Your will is engaged. Your your sense of ego and your eyeness and your protecting yourself is engaged. And your muscles will start to tense, maybe in your shoulders. It's not always a bad thing, though, because we need to be in beta. For example, as I talk to you 
and explain these things to you, and I might get a little excited. I'm going into beta for sure. And um, it can, for me as a, a, a half Asperger's, or maybe I'm all Asperger's, who's to say it's just a label? But um, when I go into beta, I'm usually not as comfortable, and I tend to get very stressed. So it's a, and, and I tend to also be in beta as, as sort of like a defense mechanism when I'm in public. It's really hard for me to relax, so I'm always in beta, and I'm kind of like vigilant and um, tense. I, mean, I want to point out here, for me, it's my shoulders. Other people might get tense in other areas. Like, I also get tense in my eyes, my nose, my really my throat when I talk. I'm very, very tense here. And then um, when I'm around certain people with certain moods that are maybe not resonating with mine or maybe they're upset, I'll feel in my solar plexus uh, pains. And I think that might be ten muscle tension that causes pain, or it could be acid. But um, that wouldn't really be related, I guess, directly to the uh, beta brainwaves. But a beta goes from uh, maybe 14 hertz of brain firings up to about 20 and then 20 to 40 to 100 that that's the gamma and we'll talk about that in a minute but but just to finish up on the beta range the beta range is uh, very often chaotic and not coherent so again I mentioned coherence you want um, Coherent. You typically, when you do brain training for any one region, you want coherence. So you want your electrodes that you're doing biofeedback with to pick up your neurons firing in synchronicity. So you would you would just get a nice curve of electrical patterns with uh, any training that you do. And um, whenever they're firing not together and in a chaotic pattern that is equivalent to when you're feeling chaotic. So when you're feeling chaotic, no surprise, because your brain firings, your neurons in your brain are firing chaotically. And to have a happy life and a peaceful life and maybe a more pleasurable life, it's good to have your brain neurons firing coherently as much as possible. And then finally, the, the gamma waves have been measured um, in people that are praying very, very intently, and especially people that have trained in meditation for many, many decades, they're able to, when they're doing their compassion or their intention prayers or wanting to um, send with fervently with all the um, capacity in their in, in their capacity, all their with all their capacity. I don't know all their intentional capacity. They're willing something to happen. Like for example, when you do the Buddhist compassion meditation, and you're in the gamma state, you're fervently wishing all humans, including yourself, your cat, your city, the world, and everyone, your enemies, your friends, to be happy. You're wishing happiness on them, and and when you fervently wish it you measure your brain waves and they're firing in gamma. Very, very high firing rates. However, they're coherent. That's what you want. And um, this is a little bit, you know, simplified, but let's just uh, talk about the coherence and then which frequency you want. So you want high coherence and all these frequencies are good for different things. Now, um, so that's kind of the background. Now for part two, I'm going to go and talk about... Um, a lot of uh, experts or people uh, around selling their products, selling their services, will claim that their brainwave frequency is the one you want. Like there's one person that says alpha. You need alpha in order to have a long life. If you're missing alpha in your brainwave patterns, then you're going to die pretty soon. That's actually his claim. And um, he notices that people, uh, when, they, when they don't have any alpha in their brainwaves, they don't live for more than a year after that. Uh, maybe it's true, I don't know, but um, that's one view. And then another view is, well, you need theta because theta makes you uh, get good creative ideas and be able to save the world because you have good creative ideas. By the way, as an aside, I hypothesize and have a lot of experience. I think Aspies live in theta. They're slower to react. They're slower to perceive, but they're super highly creative and super highly thinking out of the box. 
and multiple interpretations of things. So that's that's the theta domain, a little bit slower firing. Um, and I know that I am a theta file. I, when I first got my brain waves tested, the guy said, you're a theta file. And he said, I'm an alpha file because he, he claims to be naturally in alpha and I was naturally in theta. So I trained myself out of theta into alpha, whatever. But so we've talked about all the levels. Now part two. So I said one expert says alpha is the God. Another one says theta is God. And then some people say, oh no, it's delta. You need to go to delta. You need to train in delta so that you can, you know, go into other worlds and um you know float among the stars. And so uh, sure enough I ordered this very expensive a CD set with binaural beats that took me into Delta, and the very first time I listened to it, and I I had only meditated off and on, you know, for maybe uh, five years, so I wasn't it wasn't like I was some expert or anything. <clears throat> Putting on the Delta binaural beats, it's uh, basically that's uh, earphones, and one ear will play one frequency, and another ear will play another frequency. Like say, if this was at 100 and this was at 110. The difference is 10, so what happens is your brain hears the difference as the beat frequency. And in fact, if you have a 10, 100 hertz tuning fork and 110 hertz tuning fork and you ring them together, you'll hear the wah, 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 wah. you'll hear the interference pattern of the two, that is the beat frequency. Um, maybe I'll insert uh, a link to beat frequency here, you know, or something so that you can go see what the beat frequency is. but. Generally, if you're in physics, you know what that is already. So I was listening to this binaural beat thing where the beat frequency was in delta. It took me down to delta around four, I think, was the beginner tape. And what happened was I had closed eyes, and I was alone in a bedroom during the day, and I was wide awake. And I saw um, I was floating in space. I could simultaneously feel myself laying on the bed, but less and less of that, and then sort of floating in space. Just a slight floating sensation, nothing um, groundbreaking. But I did, the groundbreaking part was the visuals. I saw this shape that was so big that I can't even explain it. Bigger than a planet, bigger than a universe. Well, maybe not bigger than the universe, but maybe it was as big as a nebula. But I didn't know that at the time. It just seemed so big. And I was still me. I was still just me. And this big blobby thing that was so big was beautiful and purple and I shaped a certain way, kind of like a, kind of like a plume of something, like a, a, a ghostly figure, okay, and um, sort of purpley bulges on it, like the size of a sides of a mountain. And it was conscious, and there was other ones near it, like three or four, like a family of them. They were looking down upon me with love, and I felt so loved and appreciated by these beings. I knew I wasn't one of them. And I knew they were much more vast and intelligent and all-powerful and loving than I could ever be. And to, to them, I was like a puppy or maybe a puppy's puppy, you know, like several levels down, you know. And I felt so loved and so appreciated, and it changed my life. And I couldn't believe that binaural beats could do this. And um, it was maybe lasted 15 minutes, maybe 10, I don't know, I kind of lost track. But maybe 30 minutes. But anyway, then afterwards I was like, wow, that was like so amazing. And no drugs involved or anything. Just uh, just very visual, you know. And then about a year or two later, and I was young in my scientific career then, so I didn't really know what the Eagle Nebula looked like. I must have missed it. But I was looking at some books, and I came across the Eagle Nebula like three years later or something, and on a picture on um, the Internet. And I, and I just sat there and stared, and I was like, but that's what I saw in my Delta journey, you know, my binaural beats Delta journey. I saw that. It was exactly the same thing. And it was the Eagle Nebula. Um, and it made me think that the Eagle Nebula might have a consciousness. And maybe um, I'm the child of the Eagle Nebula. And somehow, I, you know, kind of like people talk about angels, seeing angels or seeing other beings. Well, I saw this other being and it was it was... Uh, concentrated or localized around this nebula and um, you know you can laugh if you want I mean I don't mind if you don't believe me or if you're laughing or you know if you don't believe in spirits or anything that's fine I mean we all uh, I, I believed in spirits before and after but maybe more strongly after because I had this direct experience 
before I was kind of like, well, you know, spirits could be there, but I don't have any proof, and who, who could ever prove it? And I'm still sort of that way, but since I personally saw the nebula, and I know that that was what I saw now in retrospect, um, and I do know it had a consciousness, um, it makes me feel good about our future and about who we are, because that being... You know, whether it was temporarily in the nebula or it'll always be in the nebula until the nebula expands with the rest of the universe and then goes to the big crunch. I mean, who knows? You know, maybe I'm part of that. But um, it was, that's my experience with Delta. So that was kind of a fun aside also. Um, now, so some people say you need Delta. Some people say you need Theta for creativity. Some people say you need Alpha for long life and health. And you definitely need it for your brain to be healthy because when you're not in alpha, your brain's not getting the nutrients as much as any other state. So alpha's the best for that. And um, so if you want to have a healthy brain and you want to get all the good stuff into your brain and the bad toxins out, have a lot of alpha. Now, it might like help uh, remove the beta amyloid plaques that build up and uh, uh, postpone or prevent Alzheimer's. So there's some evidence for that. I skipped up to gamma. Gamma is where you're praying and having a strong, passionate drive to help others and, and want them to be happy. And that's, um, that's a good feeling to have. If you don't want to call it prayer, you could call it compassion meditation, where you're wishing others well and you're wishing yourself well and you're wishing the universe to be happy and you're you're putting your mental energy into happiness and goodness and then I think that's where beta can come in as a good thing so and then I meant to say gamma gratitude just be in rapturous gratitude for the gorgeousness of nature kind of like I'm feeling right now because of the sun came out today and didn't know the sun was going to come out today so I'm really 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 happy and I'm crouching down because I want to be able to see the camera and see, see the mirror I'm looking at myself in the mirror to make sure I'm staying in the camera okay um, so uh, my conclusion then is that um, actually some people actually do train to go into beta but they want it to be more coherent rather than incoherent but all in all, all in all I think that um, it's most important if you're going to do brainwave training to just realize that there are all these different opinions and if you're if you've mm, Train, if you've trained in all of these and you might be deficient in one over the other, then you might want to train in that. Like for me, I'm, I was kind of deficient in alpha, so I need, probably still need to practice alpha. And once you learn how to identify what these feel like by either doing the hypnagogic um, training with electrodes on your brain or just noticing that you're in the hypnagogic state, you go, oh yeah, that's what... Carol said in her video that this is the hypnagogic state where I can see images behind my closed eyes. So that's that's theta. So I'm in five to fifteen. You try to um, hold that state, then you're training in that field in that state. I don't know how to go to delta without those um, binaural beat uh, earbuds. I, I don't know how you would train to do that because otherwise you would just fall asleep. But somehow with the earbuds it helped me. Um, very easy to train in theta and alpha. Um, some people may want to train in beta trying to get coherence or to be more awake and aware and um, active. If you're just stuck in theta and alpha and you can't get into beta, you might not be able to function very well in society because we need to be able to react quickly, say, when we're driving or um, maybe interacting with people if you're a customer service rep or whatever. You need to be in beta and be very aware and awake and, come on, come on, let's get moving here, you know, <laughs> if you work at fast food place or something. Um, so then, um, and then training in gamma, I've never done that, but I do know that um, people that meditate and do loving kindness or compassion meditation often reach beta by having a really, really strong intention to help others. So um, that's all I'll say. Just realize that all of these brainwaves are important and coherence is really, really, really important that a lot of people don't really mention the coherent part. You want to be alpha and coherent. You want to be theta and coherent, delta and coherent, beta and coherent, and gamma and coherent. So, and um, thank you very much for listening. Peace, everybody, and you have a wonderful day, and I hope it's sunny where you are. Bye.